Okay, I know it's been forever since I've done a video, but there's one thing you guys have literally got to understand. When you have a pool in your backyard, it's super hard to be inside behind a computer. Nevertheless, here I am. So I know there's been a ton of stuff going on with the Coburger case. A lot of it, I don't really look at like, oh, that needs to be something that's a video right now. But uh, with all the stuff that's come out, it has given me an opportunity to do my favorite thing and dig into some things. So here we go. Dana Smithers, there's a grand jury who's called on Coburger's parents to testify in regards to Dana's case. But when I tell y'all that you cannot write fiction better than true crime, it's not a joke. So what are the basics we know about Dana? She's 45 and she went missing on May 28th of 22. Dana's remains were recently found on 427 of 23. There's a lot of moving parts to this story, okay? So I'm kind of like a rat on amphetamines, but just stick with me. So we know on the night of the 28th that Dana, her daughter, and her daughter's father went to the first annual festival at Happy Hour Bar and Grill in Stroudsburg. It was a Saturday. They closed off the street, blah, blah. It was a festival. They had live music, vendors, food, drinks. All of that, right? And here's a lineup of the performers that were there. Not sure if it's relevant. But I also don't know what kind of music Koberger was into either. So it could be. The three of them, Smithers, the daughter, and the father of the daughter, returned back to her house. Well, technically, I think it was her mother's house. She lived with her mom. Anyway, not important. After the festival, Dana's friend, Tara, said that she came to her house, which wasn't unusual. They had been neighbors for like 16 years. So they kind of had like an open door policy and they were just really good friends, right? One thing Tara did say is that she kind of wondered if Dana was nervous about something because she was smoking, which is something that she really only did when she was nervous or upset. Anyway, Dana left Tara's house at 11.05 that night, and we do have ring doorbell footage of her leaving. And take note, her cell phone is in her hand, which to me indicates she left her house after she got home from her friend's house because they found the cell phone in her home. So I want to take a look at the map so we can see where everything is located. Right here, we have Dana's home on Stokes Avenue and a few blocks away, the Happy Hour Bar and Grill. So digging around, I found a comment that was really interesting. What are the odds that she relapsed? It's no secret that Koberger lived a life of anti-sobriety at times, but are there other connections we can draw from the two of them? In other words, could Koberger actually be the person responsible for Dana? All right, it's important to point out that if you were leaving Koberger's parents' house and you were going to the happy hour bar and grill, there are three different routes that will get you there. We're going to focus on route number three. And I want to point out a certain town on the map, the town of Readers, Pennsylvania. Taking this third route, you have to drive directly through Readers and you get right on Interstate 80. Why is this town relevant? Because Dana worked at Dollar General in Readers. So on the map, here's the Dollar General and here's the wooded area where Dana was found. So here's the happy hour bar and grill. This is Dana's house. And this is where they found her remains. Now, here's where we start to go off the deep end. The first thing I see that stops me is the name of the street, King Street, located two miles from Dana's house. Another one that caught my eye was this Bryant Street, spelled exactly like his name. And if we look at this from a big picture aerial view, 
right here is Bryant Street and here is Dana's house. If in fact it was Koberger, is it possible he was just driving around looking? Now I want to go back to May 24th, 22, which is four days before Dana went missing. On the 24th of May, Eric Skelza, the owner of Happy Hour Bar and Grill, and Jessica Bauer, who is a fun for money type of gal, were arrested. So Bauer was doing her thing out of a hotel in Stroudsburg, and she was actually on the run after fleeing from a rehab, and she had a warrant. She was known to use that white stuff in a pipe. So basically, they had just finished a quote-unquote date where Skelza actually exchanged money for company. What's interesting is Bauer was held for her warrant, but Skelza was actually released from custody. So a few of these people have some stuff in common, right? Obviously, past and or present recreational use of illegal substances. Visiting and hanging out at random little bars. Now, we know Koberger didn't move to Washington until June, which kind of seems to be maybe a little pattern here, right? He's moving to go to school in June, so he commits the crime in May, right before he leaves. Then, if you think about the King Road incident in Moscow, he did that in November, right before he left for fall break. Bonus round, I know a lot of you on this page are into like horoscopes, numerology, coincidences and stuff, so let me give you one. Remember Eric Skelza, who we just talked about, the owner of the Happy Hour Bar and Grill, and also a former councilman? You gotta watch those people in high up places. Well, this is Eric Skelza's home. One block over from his house, we have Queen Street. And one block from Queen Street, we have King Street. Now, heading back to Moscow, right here is 1122 King Road. And one block over, Queen Road. I'm out.